Hey guys, SuperTentBuff here, and I'm with a Xcode tutorial for you today. This is going to be a tutorial for the iOS platform, and I'm going to be showing you how to use a UI switch in your iPhone application. So let's open up Xcode and start a new project. I'm going to start a view based application, and I'm going to call this Switch1. Save on the desktop. Okay. Now we're going to come into our viewcontrol.h file, as we always do at the start of the tutorials. And in between the two uh, curly brackets, we're going to um, set up an IB outlet. So I'll type in IB outlet space UI switch space star, and then give your switch a name. I'm just going to call this switch1. Uh, semicolon, save that. It's all done. Now we're going to make an uh, IB uh, uh, an IB outlet for a UI label. Uh, the reason for this is I'm going to just explain to you quickly. Um, basically, to demonstrate how to use a switch, I'm going to make a switch which simply um, changes a text in the label. So hence, what I'm going to do use a IB outlet and initialize a UI label. I'm just going to call this label one. So save that. Okay. Now, after our closing curly brackets, we're going to type in the following code. So, IB action uh, change switch colon open brackets ID close brackets sender and then semicolon and save. Now we're just going to copy this IB action and come into our .m file, vcontrol.m file and we're just going to paste that there and then open a curly bracket and close a curly bracket now in our curly brackets we're just going to add the following code which does a certain action when the switch is on and when the switch is off so let's start, so we're going to use a if function, so if open brackets switch one dot on close brackets and then space open and close two more curly brackets and in between these curly brackets now this is where we're going to add the actual action itself so as you can see if the switch is on now the following action label one dot text equals at and then I'm just going to write on semicolon save so basically what this is saying of course as I just said so if so if the switch is set to the on position then the label the label's text will change to on. Okay. Now after this closing brackets, we're going to add another if statement. So if open brackets, open square brackets now as well. Switch one space is capital O N. Close square brackets, close brackets, and then open a curly bracket and close curly bracket. And now in between these. Uh, two curly brackets, add in the same action as we did in our first if statement. Let's so just copy that there. So now we've added two if statements, we just need to add an else statement. So basically saying that if the switch is then put to the off position, the following action will happen. So else, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and in between the curly brackets, add in the following code. So label one dot text equals at and in between the two quotation marks, we're going to put off, semicolon, save. So basically, let me run uh, through what this code does. So here we have the IB action. So when the switch is basically clicked on, uh, the following if statements will happen. So if the switch was in the off position, obviously the switch only has two positions, on and off. Okay. So if it was already in off position, it will, it's obviously going to change to the on position. And that therefore means that if it changes to the on position, this following code happens here, which is basically saying label one's text will change to on. Otherwise, if the switch was already in the on position and was selected, the label text will change to off. Okay. Let's just save that. Now we've done all the code we need to do. So now we're going to come into our viewcontrol.xib and add in the interface for this code. So we're just going to drag in a UI label and we're also going to drag in a UI switch. I'm going to clear the label so it doesn't say anything to begin with. It's just going to be a blank label. There we go. 
Now just click on our files owner here and click on the connections tab in Interface Builder and connect our outlets to our interface file. So click the label one to our label and the switch one to the switch. And then in the received action section, we're going to connect the change switch to our UI switch and select touch up inside and save that. All right, we're all done in the code and the interface file. So we can go ahead and run um, our application in the iOS simulator. So let's just click on run. Notice how much faster it is to build an application in Xcode 4. Alright, so as you can see the switch is in the on position. Um, now by default, the reason there isn't actually any text in our label is because I haven't added uh, um, any text or uh, some action to add text in um, by default in the super viewed load method. Um, I could, but I didn't. But anyway, as you can see, if we turn this to the off position, our label now says off. If we turn this back to the on position, our label says on. So you can see the code does work, and this is how you use a UI switch. And it really is very simple, isn't it? I mean, just look at it. Simple and very easy to use, and can be very effective uh, in your iPhone application. Um, I've been considering using a UI switch now for quite a few of my uh, iPhone applications now, um, and they have become they have become very handy. Um, you know, and it's an easy way for you know the user to ch change a certain setting um, in your iOS application. So there we have it, guys. That is how you can use a UI switch uh, in the iOS SDK. Well, thank you very much for watching this Xcode tutorial. Um, please stay tuned to my YouTube channel. I've got more great tutorials coming up. Um, as well as some really exciting unboxings. Um, although, you know, I've, I've got an unboxing hopefully coming soon. Um, um, well, depends how long it takes to uh, get posted, but uh, hopefully it'll be delivered soon and uh, I'll bring you a really exciting unboxing. Um, and then as well as that, I've got some interesting iPhone app reviews as well and some Mac app reviews as well coming up on my YouTube channel. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. And... Uh, also, thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm so close to 1,000 subscribers, which for me is a huge milestone. So thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel. Alright guys, well until next time, I'll uh, see you in my next video.